And she teach our, our guests our chant. Who's gonna help me today? Who's gonna help me this morning? Or this afternoon? All right, come on. Everybody, come on. This is what we do, brothers. Yeah, everybody ready? Especially in light of what's going on. Everybody ready? Mountain. Mountain. Move out of my way. Move out of my way. Mountain. Mountain. Move out of my way. Move out of my way. Mountain of guns. Mountain of guns. Move out of my way. Move out of my way. Mountain of drugs. Mountain of drugs. Move out of my way. Move out of my way. Mountain of violence. Mountain of violence. Move out of my way. Move out of my way. Mountain of ignorance. Mountain of ignorance. Move out of my way. Move out of my way. Because I. Because I. Am somebody. Am somebody. And I can be. And I can be. And I will be. And I will be. Anything. 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 I want to be. I want to be. Doctor. Doctor, lawyer, 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 judge, judge journalist, 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 writer, writer firefighter, 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 principal, principal, principal president, 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 anything, anything I want to be. With my, my mind can't conceive it, can't see it and, my and my heart can't believe it, can't believe then I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I can't achieve it. For I am an Obama scholar, an Obama scholar. And I will strive to be outstanding, brilliant. I will achieve. I'll be motivated. Positive attitude. Positive attitude. Mountain, move out of my way. Give yourselves a hand, Lincoln Bell. Let me just thank you all. You look just like you. I've been shot down in these streets. 17. 17, since this October. Shot and killed. Not just shot, shot and killed. 17 who look just like you. There's something wrong with that. These are young men who could have been doctors or lawyers or engineers or writers or firefighters or police officers, teachers. We don't know. We never know. But what we do know is that you're here in your lives. So this is a program, but we, what we're here to do, Mr. Ficklin, Mr. Tenney, and brothers of the, the Firebirds, Dr. Davis are here. We're here because we love you and care for you. We want, we want to see you graduate. We want to see you walk across the stages at Hampton and Howard University, or Yale, or Harvard, or Southern, or, or Quinnipiac, or Albertus. Um, and we don't want to come visit you at Cheshire, or Uncasville, or Whaley Avenue, or, or, or go to your funeral. We're at Procreating down next to an avenue like the 18 year old last week. We don't want that. Ms. Gaddison doesn't want that. You don't want that for yourselves. So we're here today, uh, in the interest of time, we're going to first introduce, um, before I bring up the five, the five birds, we're we'll doing we'll do a great job in this community, Dr. Norm Davis. Dr. Davis is a retired business, executive business, businessman who wrote a book, the book right there on the table, called The Black Quarterback Syndrome. He's going to talk about what that means. And, and uh, we're honored to have him today to take time out of his busy schedule. He's going to go first and share his experiences with you and uh, why it's important for you to, do, to continue to go to school, stay in school, respect yourself, do your homework. I'm wondering, what the heck can this old guy with all his gray hair, receding hairline, okay, oh, what could he be possibly, what could he possibly have to share with us today? I got to tell you, I've been thinking the same thing for the whole last week, okay? But, then I thought about it more. My wife said, you know, you always got your book. I said, yeah. She said, then plus you know a lot of stuff because you've been there too. And I said, yeah. But you don't listen to me. <laughs> she said, well, I'm not doing them. So anyway, here I am, and I do want to talk about my book, The Black Quarterback Syndrome, OK? So um, you're probably wondering what a syndrome is, the black quarterback syndrome. I'm guessing that. You all know what, a, what black means and what it is, right? That's our race. And I'm guessing that you all also know what a quarterback is, right? That's the captain on the football team, the person that leads and calls the plays, right? But I imagine that you may not know what a syndrome is. And I didn't want to be one of these professors that picks these fancy, mysterious kind of names. And so I called my book about certain circumstances, OK? And every time these circumstances and symptoms come up, there are some consequences that happen afterwards. There are some things happen as a result of that. And usually those things that happen are negative. Now, to help you understand this, I made up a syndrome just for today, OK? Don't use it after this, <laughs> OK? <laughs> it's called the chocolate leg syndrome, OK? You've heard that song, haven't you? No. Have you heard this song about <laughs> I knew somebody heard that song. What's it called, Dan? Wrap your chocolate legs. Wrap your uh, chocolate I want you to wrap your chocolate legs around me. Okay? Now that's the name of this syndrome. When you run into situations, you as a man or a young man, right? You're all young men. 
okay? And you run into these good looking ladies, you know they're out there, right? Some of them are right upstairs. I know it. <laughs> I know it. I know it. Some of them are right upstairs. But let me tell you, here's a couple of symptoms. You young, good looking men, and those things, those girls that are upstairs, they're good looking good, right? Great looking. When they come into the circle, when you guys get together, some negative consequences could actually occur. It's hard to imagine, but it's true. If you get too serious and get all involved at a real young age, what are some negative things that could happen to you? Pregnancy. Pregnancy, right? Are you ready to take care of a kid? Nah, son. Are you? <laughs> How about you? Heck no, because you might have other plans, right? What does it do to your mind when you start putting your mind on the, on the girl's chocolate legs? You get stressed out. Oh, what you, man, you have a lot of experience already. <laughs> what else? You start to um, mess up your schoolwork. You start to Ooh. fall back behind. How about that? Stuff. How about that? Isaac, you had your hand up, didn't you? Okay. You probably want to play some basketball because you, you responded positively. I've seen a lot of guys go down the tubes. I'm not saying, by the way, don't get involved with girls. I'm not saying that at all. But when you lose control, that's when the syndrome takes over. So now I think you have a better idea what a syndrome is. So here's back to the black quarterback circumstances that can throw you off balance. Okay. Now, um, so why do I call my book the black quarterback syndrome? It's, go ahead. You want to take a guess? Kevin. Kevin? <laughs> that's a good possibility. That wasn't even the one I was thinking about. But it, that's a good explanation. I'm going to give that again. Back there. There's a black quarterback that got problems. Toby, I was about to say that. <laughs> a black quarterback could have problems. In fact, that's why I named it that, because many years ago, when I was about your age, there were no black quarterbacks in the National Football League. And hardly any played at the colleges, at many colleges. The only colleges where a, a black quarterback could play was at a black college. And that, those colleges were pretty much all in the South. Okay? So for years, people didn't have confidence in black quarterbacks. They didn't have confidence that they could understand the plays and so forth, that they could uh, execute the plays, that they could read defenses. Now, here I am in, in school, and I'm thinking to myself, all the smart black guys I know, that's ridiculous. But that's what they had in their mind. And my buddy, Marlon Briscoe, became one of the first black quarterbacks. He, he became the first starting black quarterback in the National Football League. You know him? About a half, uh, about a half a mile from here, over at Alberta's. He talked about all of the challenges he had to be a quarterback. You know what? Every time he would go to Pop Warner football practice, and he'd get in the line for quarterbacks, they said, "No, no, 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 no. You should be a running back. You should be a defensive back." They wouldn't even let him be in the line for quarterbacks, but he was insistent passionate about the fact that he wanted to be a quarterback. So was he, he fast? He was fast. He was a little short. Right he was left-handed. I tell you what, you know who Michael Vick is, right? Yeah. He looks just like Michael Vick. He's even left-handed. His face even looks like Michael Vick. They were even in a commercial together, but that was before Michael Vick got involved with the dog problem, and that stopped the commercial. They stopped playing it on TV. Now, the dog problem? Yeah. Was when I heard when I heard my friend come here and talk about how hard it was for him to make it in football, well, I said it's the same thing existing out here in corporations and in organizations. It's hard to make it if you are the first black person, the first woman, the first Latino. Okay, it's hard to make it. Now, okay, let's see here. Who's got some hands here? All right. All right. You, you now are the first. How do you feel? Does that make you nervous just thinking? It makes me feel Would that make you be nervous if you were first? Yeah. Can you think of any pressures you might feel? Hold on, guys. Can anyone think of, can you think of any pressures you might face because you're the first? Or can anyone else think of any pressures you might face? You'd be happy. You'd be happy, that's one thing, and when you're happy, there's extra pressure, you get nervous. What kind of pressure do you think you might feel? We'll come back to you. How about you? Uh, are the white people picking on 
Because he's a black. They might pick on him like they did Jackie Robinson. Oh, in fact, they like they did on him. Suppose he dropped the pass. I don't remember now. If he scored once, he could be picked on the team. Okay, this is a good point. If he screws black quarterback, if he screws up, how are you feeling personally? I don't want that black guy on my team. You, yeah, he, might, he screwed up and I don't want him, and now you're labeling it that he's black, right? And some people might think he screwed up because he's black. It's something like this. I haven't seen it. Tell me about it. It's about this. Oh, I did see that. And he was a running back, and every time... They'll tackle him, they just started, the white guys, they just started beating on them and spitting. Okay, okay. Now, let me bring this forward. It's it's a lot better than that used to be. Would you throw the ball back to me? Thank you. Okay, it's a lot better than it used to be, but it's not over. And in business and in organizations, it's still way from being over. Because when you are a first, and it's not just black, but when you are a first anything, you might face, face some pressure. You want to catch this? And oh. All right. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna it. All right. All right. Now, you're the you're the first black starting quarterback, for Puerto Rican quarterback. Okay. How are you feeling about that? Good. You feeling excited? Are you proud? Yeah. You feel any pressure? Feeling local. No. You, you don't feel any pressure. Great. Throw it to one more person here. I'm going to give him a real challenging question. I want you now to just imagine that women want to start playing professional football. Whoa. 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 Now, I want you to imagine, see that pole? Or one of those, see the picture over there? I want you to imagine that one of those women on that picture has just become the That's first starting woman quarterback in the National Football League. Do you think she feels pressure? Yeah. Whoa. What kind of pressure do you think she might feel? She's the only girl in the league. She's the only girl, the only woman. So if she messes up, what do you think the other women are going to feel like? I could be bad. You just said bad. Hey, what's that? Bad. They might be mad. They might be let down. But they're also probably going to be proud, right? Because they wouldn't be mad. Okay. So this is just a little taste of what it's like when you are a first or a pioneer in an organization. And that's what this book talks about. It doesn't whine about it, though. It talks about what you can do, specific steps. Actually, these are steps that anybody can do if they want to be good in an organization, period. OK, so it really is not about being black. So I'm hoping I use this black so that black people can identify with it. And I can be sure to sell some copies, right? Because I know we need it and want it very badly. I want to tell you about one last thing, and that's something called, uh, it's, it's a, there's a statue down in uh, Brooklyn, New York. And it's a statue of Jackie Robinson and a guy named Pee Wee Reese. Anybody ever heard of <laughs> Pee Wee Reese? I'll tell you who that is. Anybody who know, know who Jackie Robinson is or was? I'm a surprise. Way in the back there. How about you? Jackie Robinson was a famous. I'm sorry, no, I, I meant a player. Famous because he was first. And I tell you, this is a long time ago. Thankfully, things are a lot better now. But the fans didn't want him on the team. Guess what? The other players on the other teams didn't want him on the team. And guess what? Even the guys on his own team didn't want him on the team. But he was a beast, though. See, he was what? He was good. He was great. And there was a guy, there was a white guy on his team from the South, and at that time, the South particularly uh, was very, they demonstrated very often that they didn't like black folks. But this white guy's name was Pee Wee Reese, okay? Wasn't well, that his coach? No, there was a player. <laughs> but here's what happened. He was being booed and so forth. Pee Wee Reese, the white guy, walked over to Jackie Robinson during the game, put his arm around him like this. He said, Jackie, don't worry about it. And that was a turning point with his team members and with fans around the league and so forth. And there's a statue. In fact, in fact, Jackie and Pee Wee Reese, okay? Weren't you today? When I asked the question, didn't I throw the football to you first? Yeah. 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 Yeah.
<laughs> That's for you because you went first. It's autographed for you, okay? All right. Now I'm sure that the other fellows have on it. How come you got white people on the cover? Ah, and in fact, one of these people is like designated to look like they're the quarterback, right? Yeah, the white woman. The white woman. Now that's way out, isn't it? Yeah. Because when have you ever seen a, a white woman or a black woman or any woman or a Puerto Rican woman be a quarterback, right? That's the point of this picture. I want to show you that anybody in the world could find themselves being a first in a situation. And when you are, you face the same pressure that black people have faced whenever they are first. So that's why I call it the black quarterback syndrome. I hope this becomes so popular that people can just say, you're facing the black quarterback syndrome. Even though they're talking to a white woman, a white man, the first person in a wheelchair that's doing the, the, uh, the weather report on television. You ever seen a, a person do the weather on television from a wheelchair? No. Me either. But I want to see it one day, and it's going to happen. I mentioned this to a friend of mine who lives in Denver, and he says, Norm, it's here. We got somebody who does, their, does the weather from a wheelchair. You know that person's under some extra pressure just because they look different. I don't, I'm not saying that it's intentional that people are being treated badly, but anytime you're different from the way that everybody before you looked, you look different and people doubt you. And that's part of the black quarterback syndrome. People immediately look at you and you don't look like everybody else, so they doubt you. But we're here today to let you know that all of you even if you have some internal doubts from time to time, you can do and be anything you want to be. Any other questions?